give the 40th governor another round of applause, please, because that was a mic drop. My name is Holly Mitchell, State Senator from the 30th District, Los Angeles. Uh, Reverend Sharpton, I want you to know that there is a, a minister in South LA that before election day, the governor was there and spoke at his church and he gave the governor a new nickname, White Chocolate. <laughs> governor, um, we are proud to serve with you. Uh, the budget you released, the comments you just made, let us know that you intend to be a powerful um, partner in making sure that every African American, man, woman, and child in California, as Dr. Weber said in her opening remarks, will be seen. And we thank you for that. And it doesn't hurt that you have a little swagger yourself, so it's going to be good. <laughs> doesn't hurt. When you say a person needs no introduction, what does that really mean? Think about that. I did. And I think it means that we all have our own experience or perspective of that person, right? Reverend Al Sharpton, The Facts, founder and president of the National Action Network. Reverend Sharpton heads an organization that fights for progressive, people-based policies by providing extensive voter education and registration campaigns, economic support for small community businesses, and confronting corporate racism. NON is a nonprofit civil rights organization that was formed in 1991 and has over 100 chapters nationwide. Fact. Reverend Sharpton's biography, Go Tell Pharaoh, Go and Tell Pharaoh, he describes his childhood in Brooklyn by being raised by his single mother. It talks about his adolescent years growing up in the Washington Temple Church where he was licensed and ordained by Bishop Washington at the age of nine. At age 12, Sharpton became interested in politics, mesmerized by Congressman Reverend Adam Clayton Powell. Keep the faith, baby. Adam Clayton Powell. And he founded the National Youth Movement in 1971. Under his 17-year leadership, the National Youth Movement registered thousands of people to vote, won hundreds of job opportunities and led the fight to put the first African American on the New York State Metropolitan Transit Authority Board. Those are facts. But when we say a person needs no introduction, what does that mean? It means we all have our own experience with that person, our own perspective. For some of you in the room who are 30 or under, your orientation of Reverend Sharpton may have been his eulogy at Michael Jackson's funeral. My perspective when I think why he needs no introduction is three or four things. First of all, the hair. <laughs> Second of all, his voice. If I'm walking past the TV and CNN is on, I know the voice. Third, it's his unflinching commitment to improving the lives of black people across this country. And third for me are his quotes. My first in-person presidential debate was on the USC campus when he was running for president. When there was a lot of conversation and talk about Prop 8 and a number of the presidential candidates were talking about gay rights. And without a moment's thought, Reverend Sharpton said, I think as presidential candidates, we shouldn't be talking about who people go to bed with at night but when they wake up that morning, if they have a job to go to, or a roof over their head, or feed, food to feed their children, in one line, he had changed the whole dynamic of the rhetoric of a presidential debate. I'll close with this, the fourth, I've lost track, or fifth point in terms of why he needs no introduction in my frame of reference. And it was a comment that he made to a sitting president, and I quote, Mr. President, the reason we are fighting so hard, the reason we took Florida so seriously, is our right to vote isn't gained because of our age. Our right to vote was soaked in the blood of martyrs, soaked in the blood of Goodman, Cheney, and Schwerner, 
soaked in the blood of four little girls in Birmingham. The vote is sacred to us, Mr. President. This vote can't be bargained away. This vote can't be given away. Mr. President, with all due respect, read my lips. Our vote is not for sale. Mr. President, we love America, not because all of us have seen the beauty all the time, but we believed if we kept on working, if we kept on marching, if we kept on voting, if we kept on believing, we would make America beautiful for everybody. Ladies and gentlemen, Reverend Al Sharpton. Thank you, thank you very much.